I've I've got a couple things I'm interested in. Uh, one of which is a conspiracy theory mm. that I looked into this week, and I couldn't get enough of because it was so so important that well I'll just get into it. So my entire this conspiracy purports that Long John Silver's, the fast food seafood restaurant, has never been about seafood. It's been a marijuana laundering drug business the entire time. You have my attention. So buckle up. This is important. First of all, ask yourself, have you ever seen a very crowded Long John Silver's? (laughs) (laughs) I have. You haven't. You're lying. (laughs) There's never been... I. There used to be a Long John Silver's around here. It was the only fast food place that I was like, oh, I can go there because there's no line. I'm in a hurry. Because I prefer no Captain one, D's. No, everyone does. It's easier that, that, to go to the moon than to fake a crowded Long John Silver's, I've heard. See, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, so, so with that in mind, there's never been a huge line at a Long John Silver's ever. So, And I've got the whole epic written out. So, <laughs> so, so the history is is that Long John Silver started in 1969 in Lexington, Kentucky from a man named Jim Patterson. And he wanted to have a seafood restaurant, a popular seafood restaurant. That's what he wanted to do. And he wanted to do it fast food because no one had kind of stormed, you know, that, that, no one had done that yet. And so he's like, all right, 1969, fucking we're starting our seafood fast food restaurant in Lexington, Kentucky. Never quite takes off. Meanwhile, there was a moonshining family only a few miles away that had made a fuck ton of money during Prohibition, but after Prohibition ended, they were struggling, and they were kind of, you know, their gang hold on the area, gang hold, who knows how big it was in Lexington or in the surrounding areas. Maybe. They, you know, it was, maybe, they, they were starting to lose their hold because income wasn't coming in as quickly. The guy's name was Johnny Boone, and Johnny Boone was, was the descendant of those moonshiners, the, the child of them, and he wanted to get his criminal enterprise back up. And so he decided, I'm going to get into marijuana. And so he started the Cornbread Mafia out of Lexington, Kentucky, which was all about bringing weed in, selling it, and making a bunch of money. And they did that for years. And eventually he got to the point where it's like, we can't launder this through little, you know, uh, locally owned gas stations and shit or uh, laundromats anymore. It's not going to work. We need to find someone we can launder this through. Who do they find? Jim Pat- Patterson, the owner of Long John Silver's. They go, Jim, we got a lot of money. We know that your little seafood restaurant is struggling. How about we help you expand a little bit? And so for the next 20 years, <laughs> Long John Silver's is expanding across the country. None of them have ever been busy. None of them are <laughs> serving are serving fish. It's all Johnny Boone's weed money coming in, laundering through John, Long John Silver's, and then they get it back. And so they both agreed to it. Jim Jim Patterson is exploding. Long John Silver's is expanding all over the place. Meanwhile, everybody's saying, ah, it's not a very busy place. The food's not very good. That's what people are saying. Ask anyone. And, <laughs> and so the pot is making so much money, and Long John Silver's is spreading so quickly that Johnny Boone becomes the godfather of grass in the South in the 80s. And so, in the mid-80s, the FBI starts looking into Long John Silver's and into Johnny Boone. And they catch Johnny Boone between 87 and 91. You know, that's when the investigation was in 91 is when they finally nabbed him up. And so, they nab him up, they put him in prison, but the Cornbread Mafia doesn't want to stop. They're, They're rolling. They've got lots of pot money. They've got so much pot money that they... They sponsored commercials for local politicians going against heroin because heroin was getting big at the time and they wanted the public perception of heroin to be heroin's evil, heroin's bad, heroin will give you AIDS because, you know, the the 80s AIDS scare and associating anything with AIDS in the 80s was a death sentence. So they were associating heroin with AIDS as much as possible and that did successfully for a little while in certain regions slow down heroin consumption. And what did that do? Boost up marijuana consumption and that helps the cornbread mafia a lot <laughs> and so the the crux of this is that long john silvers has never ever been popular they've never independently turned a profit and it was the cornbread mafia initially led by johnny boone 
that is responsible for the few remaining Long John Silvers. And look this up. Look at how many locations they've closed. You know why? In the last couple of decades, why marijuana they've closed so legalization. many is because marijuana legalization and the dissolve the dissolving of much of the cornbread mafia. So all of these things, I'm not saying to believe it. I'm just saying everything I just said is absolute fact. <laughs> yeah, none of that's true. <clears throat> no, um, that's true. I read it online. The thing about the restaurant not being crowded is true, and that's the that foundation of all of it. Well, the real problem is that fried fish isn't very healthy, and that's not what people are after. And there's a competitor called Captain D's, which is just superior. I don't know if you've ever had the deviled crab at Captain D's, but... I no, was. I think I think my my six generation long weed smuggling <laughs> laundering train is a little more Occam's razor.